the most enjoyable and interesting aspects for any spectator who comes to the ground is watching how much work and what type of work the players put in before they enter a day's play. So today's masterclass is going to be based on that. And I've got Australia's brand new strength and conditioning expert, Justin Cordy, with me, as well as Shane Watson, to talk us through the warm-up. But first, Justin, how is it uh, the transition from a football background to a cricket one going? It's certainly been a very different transition. Football, you've obviously got your 40-odd players that you work with week in, week out for approximately 40 weeks of the year. Cricket can be 12 months around with different players coming in and out, and certainly the demands of both the games are very, very different as well, so it's been a challenge. What do you class as the warm-up, and what do you try to achieve with a warm-up? Look, a warm-up's an interesting thing. In the past, it's typically been made up of stretching and uh, a little bit of cricket activity, some ball games, some running, things like that. What we're trying to do now is really switch on the players for the day's play. Um, if they're batting or bowling, starting to focus on what their needs are for that day and make it specific to that individual. So now, today we filmed you out in the nets. T today is a, a, a batting day for the Australians. They spent their warm-ups yep. in the nets. It didn't look like a formal setup. They were all doing their own stretches. No, that's exactly right. What we've done today is we try to give our players what we term individual time. Um, and you can see there Gilchrist, he's warming up his legs. Different players will do different stretches depending upon where they may be tight. Obviously, some players, bowlers, have to do a lot more stretching than, let's say, a batter. And in today's instance, you'll find the bowlers would have spent more time warming up than anyone else. And also, get them moving as well. It's not just static stretches, is it? You've, oh, you've no. got to get them moving, get them sweating a little bit. Very much so. I mean, we try to do as much dynamic stuff as we can. If cricket's just a static sport, well, then we do static stretching. But as we know, bowling, batting, throwing, they're fairly dynamic. So we try to do as many dynamic movements as we can possibly in the warm-up. So. Now, what are different attitudes of different players to warm-ups? What, what's yours? You, you've probably come through the warm-up era. You've had a few back injuries. Are you stiff as a board? And is this warm-up stuff what it's cracked up to be? For me, it is definitely, yeah. It's, it's something you've obviously got to go through to make sure you're right for the day's play. Um, you, can, you can pull up a bit stiff if, if you've had a bowling day the day before. So you just got to make sure that you're, that you're ready to go when, uh, when you've got to go out in the field. Batting day today for the Australians. So there's yep. probably throwdowns, there's a lot of bowling in the nets. Uh, yep. anything, anything else that batsmen need to work on? Oh, look, depending upon where the batsman's at and what sort of work we're doing, I mean, we may do throwdowns with them. We may get some of the guys in the pool or potentially even pop them on a bike as well, just depending upon how many runs they make. Hussey and Ponting wanted to be sharp today, I'd imagine. That's why they did some short, sharp catches after they had their batting. Very much so. I mean, these type of movements just switch them on thinking mentally more than anything else. I mean, Ponting can catch 100 balls and not even think about it, but when the catches are sharp and fast, there's that element of concentration, which is what you need when you're out in the middle. I saw also you were working with Adam Gilchrist on something different in the nets today. Has he been having trouble with his balance a little bit with the bat? No, not at all. I actually threw that up as a bit of a suggestion for him today. A lot of people talk about getting your core engaged. For him, we just thought about doing some different movements where we give him some resistance, where he has to find his balance almost to centra central centralise his body so that he's right to get into that batting mode. Does so. that come through the feet or the centre? Well, it really comes through the core, so the stomach, the back muscles, those type of areas. If that's balanced and strong, you know he's going to be in good, good foot position, good arm movements and things like that. His head's going to be nice and still. So we really try to work on getting them strong through that area. Oh, you could be the genius if he comes off today. Now, what <laughs> are the grind of daily warm-ups? Uh, not only at, during match days, but also practice. It, it's not easy. It needs to be kept uh, nice and interesting for the players. Yeah, absolutely. That's why footy normally comes out to, to um, give the guys a bit of energy. That's when War you really see Warney at his best, when he's got a uh, Aussie Reels footy in his hand. And that's normally when he really enjoys a warm-up. Apart from that, Warney sort of no normally just makes sure he has a little bit of a stretch. Have, yeah. really. Have you got Warney anywhere near his toes yet? No. No, I don't <laughs> think I will either, to be honest. <laughs> Some people criticise the football coming out too often, the Frisbee football, wasting energy of a, of a player in the lead-up to a, a big match and a big day's play. Is that the balance, to try and preserve yeah. enough energy for the effort in the middle? Yeah, look, I'd agree with that. I think at times warm-ups can be too long. I think uh, they can go for 50 minutes to an hour, whereas realistically what we need and what we need to do on a shortest period of scale, I mean, 20 minutes, 25 minutes is more than enough. So I certainly agree that uh, at times our warm-ups can be too too, too much length in time and then you're playing all these activities that, again, just tire the players out. Have so. you had any grief from any players in, in particular? I'd be lying if I said no. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they are giving it to you, that's for sure. Uh, what, what about children and kids, junior teams and junior coaches? It's quite a, often a, a small preparation time they get to get their team together on a Saturday morning. Yep. What do you recommend for, for them? Do they, 
do they need to warm up kids? Yeah, look, that's a really good question. I mean, with elite athletes, their coordination and their skills are obviously a lot higher. With junior kids, it's probably more about participation, having fun, and even a little bit of coordination. So working on coordination with kids at times, just so you keep that interest level up and they enjoy the sport as opposed to uh, making it too regimented. And then all of a sudden, the kids don't enjoy sport. And if they make it to the Australian level, they're going to do hundreds of warm-ups in their time anyway. So. Uh, yeah, well, Justin, thanks very much for your time today. You too, Watto. And uh, there's so much to think about in the fitness area, varying it from batting and bowling days, making it interesting for the players, but still keeping it effective uh, from junior levels right the way up to the elite level. So uh, plenty to think about for coaches. Thanks very much for all your feedback and your information and your email topics for the whole season. The masterclass is finished and hopefully we'll be back next year. We've really appreciated your involvement as viewers. And after the break, we're back with Simon O'Donnell.